Well, welcome again to another episode of Christian Answers, and I'm here in studio, and I will be talking about contemporary issues in the news, as we do every week. Today, I'd like to talk about the Duggar scandal, the Josh Duggar scandal. I was meaning to address this uh, topic before, but things keep coming up, and I haven't gotten around to it. Finally, I decided I'd do it. I was originally going to talk about Josh Duggar and his family and this uh, abuse charges uh, that came up a few months ago and that the family stood behind their son and said that this was an internal uh, matter in the family that was dealt with. Uh, They had counseling, they went to the police, and Josh Duggar had... uh, got past this, and his sisters supported him in moving past this, and we were feeling that the news media was a little bit piling on. They were trying to find something uh, about this family's life because they don't like this family. This family represents a good, Christian, wholesome uh, family environment, and, and, and the news media did not like that, and so I felt, and other Christians did, that the that the uh, media culture was trying to pick on this family to try to bring this family down in some form or fashion. And they did not want this family to deal with this issue in a Christian way, in which they did. And so I was going to do a program on how the news media was picking on this family because they were Christians and they didn't like what they stood for, the wholesomeness and they didn't like the way in which they prayed, in which they conducted their lives, because um, most of the secular culture today that we live in does not conduct their lives in a Christian manner, and they don't uh, follow the teachings of the Bible. And so when they see a family that tries to do that, uh, follow the Bible, they don't like that. That, that. that makes them feel uneasy, that makes them feel angry, in fact, uh, and they try to uh, attack any Christian that wants to hold to higher moral standards. Well, that was before the last, latest scandal involving Josh Duggar, and this one involves a adultery website <clears throat> in which he and his email address and his name and his information is associated with. Now, this one in my estimation, is totally indefensible. There's nothing that the family can do, there's nothing his sisters can do to stand behind him on this one, because this one is pure sinfulness and pure evil and even wickedness. This man, this young man, evidently, uh, who is a married man with children, evidently visited a adulterous site on the internet and signed up to uh, use their services to uh, link up with other people that want to commit adultery. And in fact, uh, through his own words, he has admitted that he has been unfaithful to his wife. And so in respect to this latest scandal, um, I see no defense on his part, and I don't see any defense that can be given by his family for his actions. They're pure hypocrisy, and he said as much so himself after this all came out, after this information had been leaked and hacked. What had happened is this adulterous website had been hacked by hackers, and they stole all of the client's information on the people who were using this site, and then now they're leaking that information to the press. Well, it actually serves the client's right and it's a good example of your sin will find you out. I'm going to be doing a video in the future dealing with the sins of former Speaker of the House, Hastert, who basically had this whole situation happen to him. His sins of his past have found him out and uh, have shown him to be a hypocrite. And so what happens is these people that visit this uh, adulterous website, their sins are finding them out now, because lo and behold, their names are surfacing, and we're going to see some pretty high-profile people uh, exposed. In fact, just this past week, uh, there was a high 
high-profile Christian theologian and leader exposed. His name was R.C. Sproul Jr. Now, his father is the famous R.C. Sproul, who started Legionnaire Ministries and is a uh, teacher, produced many, many DVDs, uh, videotapes, and other resources for churches, and taught theology for many, many years. And he started this ministry, Legionnaire Ministries. Uh, R.C. Sproul Jr., his son, has been leader of that ministry and has also gone on and served in leadership capacity at other institutions. And so he is a Christian leader. He's a credible Christian leader. And all of a sudden, it surfaces that, lo and behold, R.C. Sproul Jr. has visited the site, and he claims uh, that that he signed up and he was tempted and interested, but he never did contact any other clients, and he never did uh, carry out any illicit uh, relationship through this uh, adulterous website service. And so uh, he was uh, confessing uh, his sin of, of uh, lust in his heart and his uh, sinful curiosity, but he, did, he does maintain that he did not do anything sinful in other than just signing up and poking around and being a curious cat on this uh, site. And so um, the, the evidence is not there to convict him either way, so we have to assume that he is telling the truth. He is a uh, credible Christian leader, and so it, until uh, evidence to the contrary, I do believe that uh, R.C. Sproul Jr. did not uh, do anything further than just sign up and look around and poke around on this site in a moment of temptation or curious, sinful curiosity, he did this. Now, Josh Duger has admitted, he has confessed that he has been unfaithful to his wife. Uh, the evidence shows that he had two, two uh, sign-ups on this, uh, uh, it's called Ashley Madison Adulterous Site. He had two uh, counts on here, and he's paid thousands of dollars to be a member. So he actually participated in the services on this thing. Now, there is no excuse for what he did. There is none. And it does show him to be a hypocrite. And that raises the question, uh, is he hiding behind, or is the family hiding behind their Christianity? And uh, that is the question that was raised by a CNN reporter uh, named Don Lemon. And I'd like to play a clip here and then interact with some of what is said here on this clip on this CNN interview. So let's uh, roll the clip and then interact with this afterwards. But why do you feel this has nothing to do with Christianity? Well, bottom line is this young man did something uh, terrible at his age, uh, but for me as a Christian, this doesn't define who I am. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't have anything to do with um, the faith that I serve. Now, if, uh, if, they, if that's what they want to, to uh, stand behind after all these years, if that's what the family wants to stand behind, that's their prerogative. But it doesn't have anything to do with the Christian faith itself. You don't have us going out and... Uh, uh, condoning this no I mean as a matter of fact if you look on social media right now there are Christians that are angry at this and they are letting their voices be known about this. there are but, but there are Christians as well who act. are okay so we have the interview uh, between Don Lemon the host and a couple of other panel members and one of them is a radio talk show host and he is uh, answering the charge by Don Lemon that this is about Christianity. Now, that's an odd way to start an interview, to blame Christianity for the sins of this man, Josh Duggar. Uh, he was involved when he was a young boy in some kind of inappropriate touching of, of these girls. Um, the family... He confessed to his family, his father and his mother, and they worked through this, with, and they went to the police. The police interviewed him, and the police dealt with it, and then he was through counseling, and he went through all of this. Now he's involved in something a lot more uh, uh, 
bad, and this is involving infidelity to his wife and his uh, committing adultery <clears throat> with these clients at this uh, adultery website. Now, <clears throat> what does the role of Christianity play in this problem that he has? Well, I don't understand exactly what Don Lemon is trying to get at, uh, if unless he's trying to say that all Christians are hypocrites, or that Christianity causes people to become a hypocrite, uh, which does not follow at all logically. But what I think uh, I hear him saying is that the Duger family is involved in hypocrisy because they're trying to portray a good, wholesome family value image, while at the same time they're struggling with a lot of the things that other people struggle with also. They just don't tell you about it. And so it appears in their family record that they don't have any of the problems that other families have, but in fact, when we find out that they do have problems just like every other family, just like non-Christian family have, just like all families have, problems that come up with their young people. And now, in the case of Josh, as a married man, Lo and behold, he being this family value spokesman, in fact, he was employed by the Family Research Council, which is a conservative Christian organization dedicated to promoting uh, Christian traditional family values. And he was serving as a leadership in the leadership capacity at the Christian uh, Family Research Council. And all the while he was there, he was involved in this adulterous website, and he was involved in various acts of adultery. This is pure and simple hypocrisy. And he said as much in his confession statement where he says he was the biggest hypocrite of all. He said, he said I'm the biggest hypocrite of all. While I was espousing family values, here I was committing adultery against my wife violating the Christian moral ethics. So he's aware of what he's doing. He's aware that what he did was wrong, it was inconsistent, and that he is a hypocrite. And as Christians, we have to say, yes, indeed, this is an example of hypocrisy. But to the question Don Lemon raises of CNN to this other gentleman here on the panel, is Christianity the cause of his hypocrisy, we have to say, no, it isn't the cause of his, his hypocrisy, unless you subscribe to the philosophy that it's better to not hold to high ideals ethically and morally. Therefore, if you violate any ethical and moral standards, you are not held accountable because you don't have any standards of ethical and moral conduct. If that's what Don Lemon is trying to get at, we would say, is it really better to have no moral and ethical standards? Is it really better to not uh, hold to family values? You know, I guess there are some families, there are, we definitely know of some marriages out there. We see them on the talk shows, on the Ricky Lake, Jerry Springer, all the time. They say, well, we don't have any rules of sexual moral conduct in our family. Those spouses can sleep with whomever they want. It's an open, so-called open marriage. And it, so therefore they can't cheat on their spouse because there are no rules against that in their marriage arrangement. Is that what Don Lemon would rather uh, families have? No rules? So then no one could actually be a hypocrite. You can't be a hypocrite if you don't claim or hold to or try to hold to any kinds of values. And so uh, what's, the, what's the alternative to the Christian moral standard? Well, it would be to do away with the Christian moral standard and just say, uh, if one spouse feels led by their uh, hormones to have uh, an adulterous uh, affair— uh, that's to be expected because they don't promise anything to their spouse to the contrary. No, the Christian moral standard is that uh, to be faithful in marriage, to follow the teachings of the Bible, and to 
take those seriously. And so uh, when a Christian does violate an ethical and moral principle, it is a big deal. It is a crisis. And that's why we make a lot of this, and that's why we should make a lot of it, because this man was acting hypocritically. He was acting in bad faith. He was he was saying one thing, and he was promoting uh, one cause, and yet he was living a totally, entirely different life, contrary to what he is saying. And so that is hypocrisy. So we must say, with the strongest voice, there is no defense for what he did. This was totally wrong. I hope that his church uh, tries not to defend him or in any way tries to justify him. I hope his family doesn't try to come to his defense or comes to his justification because there is no Christian defense for what he did. It was sinful and evil and wicked, pure and simple. Just as David, King David in the Bible, his adultery with Bathsheba was pure and simple, evil and wicked. And the prophet Nathan went to him and said as much. And so we need to hold to that high standard. We need to hold people like Josh Duggar accountable. But on the other hand, we cannot come back to Christianity and say Christianity is the cause of his hypocrisy. Well, if you don't have any standards, if you're an ethical relativist, if you're an atheist, and then you cheat on your spouse, was it your atheism that caused you to cheat on him? Was, was, it, your, was it your agnosticism that caused you to hurt the person you love? I mean, it's, it's a ridiculous. Um, obviously, in this case, it, Josh Duggar did not hold to and follow the teachings of Christianity and the Bible. He violated not only the Bible and Christianity, he violated his own standards, and he is going to have to pay with his bad reputation now for the rest of his life. Maybe he will be able to redeem himself in some form or fashion, but it's going to be hard in the eyes of the public to ever regain a good, wholesome Christian uh, name again. Even though the Duggar name has been associated with a good, wholesome Christian family, I'm, I'm afraid that the whole family now is going to suffer for the sins of this one family member. Let's watch some more of this clip and talk more about it. There are Christians as well who are defending Josh Duggar. I read one uh, on social media is talking to you saying, go on and, and, and defend your Christian brother. You're saying it's not about Christianity, but the response certainly is. Even in their own response, Jim, Bob, and Michelle said, uh, that dark and difficult time caused us to seek God like never before. And then it goes on and on and says, members drew us closer to God. And everything, uh, uh, faith is so much because God's kindness and goodness and forgiveness. And even Josh Duggar said, I sought forgiveness from those I had wrong and, and asked Christ to forgive me. It's the, they mentioned God and Christianity and, uh, throughout their whole response. How do you say this has nothing to do with that? So again, this is dealing with the first scandal incident by Josh Duggar of his inappropriate touching of his sisters, and the family uh, reacted to this uh, in a Christian manner. I see nothing wrong with what they did. They took their son, as soon as they heard about it from his own testimony, they took their son to the police. The police filed a report. Um, they went for counseling. They dealt with it, and they processed it in a Christian manner. Now, I wonder, uh, it, uh, some people aren't happy about the way the family dealt with this first scandal because they didn't throw Josh Duggar under the bus. I guess they wanted their family to offer this son as a sacrifice to the tabloids and the media and, and to every conceivable punishment that he could have gotten, uh, but usually families and parents don't try to do that to their, their children. They want to try to give their children an opportunity, if they do something stupid early in life, to a chance to redeem themselves. And so uh, we can all understand why the family, why the parents, did not uh, uh, make a big deal about their son and his uh, first uh, incident here when he was uh, uh, in the family there, when he was a, a youth, 
They didn't want to uh, ruin his entire life, and so they dealt with this behind the scenes. With it's perfectly acceptable, and and it's perfectly acceptable for them to pray and to talk in terms of Christianity, and talk in terms of their church family, and rally around this because this is their faith. This is how they process everything in their life. And I guess Don Lemon, the CNN host, that bothers him because they aren't going about this in a purely secular way, the, maybe the way he would do it or the people that he knows would do it. But this family was trying to be Christian in the highest sense of that word. And so uh, they did nothing wrong with that first uh, scandal. Now, the second thing that he's doing now as an adult, now this is a difference now, that before he was a minor, he was a youth, he was in the family. Now he's an adult and his actions now are totally on him, and we don't see the family uh, rallying behind him and trying to justify or defending him in this instance, because there is no justification for it. He's an adult. There's nothing his parents can do. He did this on his own. He did this when he's out of the home. He did this as a full responsible adult, a married man with children. So this is his. It's on him totally now to uh, make amends or do whatever he has to do to make this right. But he did start out doing the right thing. As soon as this became public and known, he went out and confessed directly and said, this is hypocrisy on my part. He says, I was the biggest hypocrite, and there's no excuse and he confessed to his adultery and his pornography and the whole sordid uh, issue, and now his life is essentially uh, ruined at this point uh, as far as the public image of his life, but it may be working, God may be working all things together for good in his life because that needed to come out, and he needed to deal with this, and he needed to get his spiritual life and his family's life in order so that then he can be a better person, forget about all of the uh, media success or any other uh, high-profile position that he had in his sights, forget about all that. He's got to just become a good Christian. He's got to become a consistent Christian at this point and love his family and love his wife and do what every average Christian in the church should be doing, and that is being faithful and being faithful to his wife and family, and also, most importantly, faithful to his God. And so this actually can serve as a good uh, wake-up call for him, because uh, who knows, there might have been something even worse in the works down the future if he had continued on the path that he was in. Now, what it does raise is, is there a form of Christianity that actually encourages hypocrisy? And I would say to that question, yes, indeed. And if that's what Don Lemon here on CNN Host is trying to get at, I would uh, say that that is a, uh, a fruitful question to ask. Yes, indeed, there are forms of Christianity that encourage hypocrisy. I know, for example, as a pastor, churches can, if they're not careful, encourage hypocrisy in its leadership. And the way they do that is they hold the pastors and the leaders to such a high level of perfection in their words, in their attitudes, and in their actions, that if the pastor is struggling with anything, it could be anger, it could be envy, it could be uh, greed. It could be in any form, if the pastor shows any sign of struggling with anything, uh, it's almost as if the congregation in some churches, because of this imp impossibly perfect standard they hold their leaders, this idealistic standard, they feel that they don't have a good leader now, now because they have found out that their pastor is struggling with something, and so therefore he can't be a good role model because he's struggling with this, that, or the other. Now that is a setup for hypocrisy. Now why is that? Because then the pastor realizes, hey, if I say anything about anything I'm struggling with, if I confess any kind of sin, if I uh, ro had a rise of anger, 
and I said something mean to my kids or said something mean to my spouse, and I tell that to my congregation, and I confess to that honestly, there will be people in the church who will say, I'm unfit for leadership, and therefore, because I'm not perfect, they need to move and change pastors and find another pastor that's more perfect. And so if that's the situation, a lot of pastors will say, well, I'm just not going to share any of my struggles. I'm not going to share any of my imperfections, because if I do, it comes back to hurt me. That is a setup for hypocrisy. That is a setup for scandal. And so if, in fact, a church or a church community or the Christian community is engaged in that totally unrealistic, highly impossibly idealistic view of leadership, if that's what they're doing, then indeed Christianity in that distorted form is responsible for hypocrisy, because everyone's trying to cover up their imperfections to try to put the image forth that they are perfect. Now, is that what the Duger family was trying to do with their television show? Were they trying to present an unrealistic and really hypocritical image before the American public of what a Christian family looks like? Perhaps they were. I don't think there was any intention to deceive or any uh, intention to be hypocritical, but maybe that's in fact what they were doing. And if that's the case, um, then, then the host of CNN, Don Lemon, might have a point. And the same way with Christian community. Churches and Christians need to be honest and say, if they're failing, if they're falling, if they're tempted in a certain area, admit it. And it's better to get that out there in an all honesty than to have these uh, pent-up scandalous secrets that are just waiting for someone to expose them. If you're struggling with pornography, then tell people, tell someone, let people into your life, ask for prayer. Don't wait until some big scandal boils up and all of a sudden you're exposed as this ultimate hypocrite. Be honest. Be real. Confess your sins one to another, the Bible says in the book of James. We're supposed to do that. And if we did that as Christians, we would have far less of these scandals occurring. So we need to pray for the body of Christ at this time. We need to pray that Christians uh, begin to confess their sins and draw close to God and get holy and live the right way, and also be honest about their failings. If they're, if they're tempted in an area, if they're, they're, they're pulled to a certain sin, they need to be honest enough to deal with that before it becomes a crisis situation, and then, then dis, brings disrepute for everyone in the Christian faith. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed this presentation. We'll see you back here next week on another edition of Christian Answers. God bless. Hey.